Hello class, and welcome to That's certainly what the French thought when the Maginot Line was bypassed in 1940 by the German forces. The Maginot Line was a defensive line, I know, kind of self-explanatory, right? Invented by André Maginot in 1929, the idea of which began in the mid-1920s. As his defensive fortifications were being made, he was thinking, Oh yeah, what a wide boy. As it spanned from Switzerland to the beginning of Belgium, with some weaker defenses in place along the Belgian line. But here's the kicker, as I'm sure many of you know. Hitler and his entourage simply said, <laughs> El Mayo, what if we just go around it? <laughs> Now, in reality, it's not that simple of them just going around the line. Sure, they went around the stronger fortifications, but again, it's not even that simple. What hinged on the Maginot Line's success were what I see to be two key factors. The first being Belgium not breaking out of the alliance they had with France and assisting the French in repelling the Germans when the time came. But in 1936, the Belgians took a stance of neutrality. In World War I, they were also invaded by the Germans when they were neutral. They didn't seem to learn their lesson, uh, and the Germans went sicko mode on them a second time. The second factor for the Maginot Line to succeed was the Arden Forest. The French estimated this would take the German forces 15 days at least to cross giving them more time to freely mobilize forces. However, it only took the Germans three days as opposed to the protected minimum 15. Their panzers cleared the forest with ease, and I'm assuming the French just didn't know that the Germans were going to pay for microtransactions to make their tanks more effective. <laughs> But it was not simply penetrating and moving through the Ardennes forest quicker than expected that caught the French off guard. Before this, they sent waves of Blitzkrieg to the stronger fortifications of the Maginot Line. And while the French defenses were occupied there, a second German force achieved the play of the game. In theory, you could say the Maginot Line was in fact a idea due to the fact that it was created with the French well knowing the Germans had far more healthy young men to conscript than the French did. The French could enlist 184,000 while the Germans could enlist 464,000. And since autobalance was disabled on the server, the French believed their only recourse was a defensive line. Again, not a bad idea in isolation, but it's the execution of said idea for the most part in my opinion, and not being able to come up with other auxiliary plans if their original one failed, right? The other part of this plan that made the Maginot Line fail predominantly, I'm not going to say completely, because the point of the Maginot Line was not to stop people from getting in completely, to stop an invasion entirely, but to, you know, sequence it and then allow more troops to come in and help. But where this plan failed predominantly was the fact that they had these smaller troops along Belgium. My problem was the fact that they began this idea in 1929 without much room for flexibility. This hinged on the need for Belgium to not become neutral at any point and with no idea of when exactly the Germans would attack or if they even would attack, this plan was far from rock solid. Shut up, bitch! Again, they did have measures in place anyway of mobilizing and repelling the Germans even if Belgium decided to become neutral, which, as we know, they did. Of course, these forces fell apart when the Germans decided to send their forces in two separate armies as opposed to just one thick-ass clump, okay? I think in hindsight, and I use that word deliberately because I am here being all judgy-judgy of their plan, but remember, we have, I have all the hindsight, I have all the history to look at, all the factors, you know, that, that's why I'm saying in hindsight. But in hindsight, I think it is very easy to see just why the Maginot Line failed, and how even with this preparation, France seemed to underestimate the intelligence of their enemy. French people always thinking they're better than everybody.
And I'll address right now all the five head in the comments who want to say, even though Belgium was neutral, they still fought the Germans when they invaded. Yeah, sure, they did, but were they still collaborating with the French to make it a good defensive line? The answer to that is no, not really, since not being in the alliance anymore. And did they expect to be attacked? Again, not really, at least not adequately enough. If the Belgians had prepared more adequately for a surprise attack with the French, maybe things wouldn't have gone so bad. Although they probably still would have, in my opinion. Due to their tech prowess, manpower and strategies, I think any way you slice it, Germany had the Infinity Gauntlet and France was Spider-Man. The reality of the situation is other allies warned France of the flaws of the Maginot Line as early as 1927. So for all you gamers, I'll use lingo that you can understand. Before it was even an alpha testing, all right? Despite these warnings, they went ahead with it anyway. Some say the Maginot Line was not a failure because it did repel some German forces and they weren't able to break the main line itself. To that, I say, Boy, you you to me, it was for the most part a failure with one exception. They failed to predict any new styles of warfare. They built this line with World War I tactics in mind, and it did not work. The German superior tech just allowed them to completely circumvent this thing and get through, for example, the Arden Forest much faster than anticipated and beyond that just make their weapons far more devastating as well and yes it helped those at dunkirk escape but ultimately after the line fell and once the french surrendered the germans yoinked the maginot line for themselves they just yoinked it they were like sorry it's nothing personal kid although i think it was quite personal the germans then refortified the maginot line for their own personal use and this refortification allowed the germans to give the allies including those oil hungry americans a harder mm, harder <laughs> time to defeat them. Tragically, after the Maginot Line fell on the 14th of June 1940, the French surrendered. Paris and the rest of France was occupied extremely quickly, as most of the mobile units of the French army had been part of the force along Belgium that was pretty much annihilated. After the war, the Maginot Line was not seen to be of any strategic value. Once World War II had passed, they literally sold that shit off like I sell my common items in an RPG. <laughs> and one was even just left to decay. One part of the Maginot Line was just left there to decay. Like, there's no way to sugarcoat that, you know? If the French found no way to restructure this line as an asset to the military... I think it shows how vulnerable it really was and would be if it was continued to be used. A simple army diversion and secondary flank force was enough to render it ineffective. But of course, that's just my opinion, right? And a far more educated historian might completely slam my ass with some truth bombs on that one. I have to make it very clear. This is a hobby for me, right? The whole history thing. I love to read up on it. I loved it in school, but it's not like I'm a history major or something, right? I'm, I'm like, I just read up on it and I really enjoy it. So I am I may have even gotten a couple things wrong in this video. Well, there you have it. The wait, 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 wait. of the Maginot line. It's my first time making one of these videos, so if you have any comments on how to get better, or if you just enjoyed the video, let me know down there. And yeah, thanks for watching.